Welcome back everybody, I'm Giles, and today we're going to compare and contrast two of my favorite 15 inch subwoofers. So on one side, the expensive side, we've got the Perlison D15S, and uh, you know, I, I reviewed this a while back, superb subwoofer. And on the other side, the more affordable side, we've got the Stark Sound SW15, and I just released some content on it, and I love the subwoofer equally. Now. If you look at the subs, you know, they're similar in size, you know, uh, they, they're both 15 inch drivers, they've got an amp plate on the back, um, but they really skew different at the cost mark, right? So on sale, the uh, SW15 can be had for $500 a unit, um, and they usually sell that in a BOGO for a thousand for two. Um, on the other side, the uh, Perlison D15S is $5,000. So what do you get uh, for the $5,000 um, that the $500 sub doesn't have? And which one fits into your environment? Which one is right for you? Um, ultimately, you know, I think the big comparison is going to come in the, uh, the REW measurements that I did. And for those that are not familiar, uh, I always measure all subs at the same spot in room uh, in my home theater, in my basement. That way, while it's not like a outdoor, you know, plane level measurement that's all super perfect, it gives you a really excellent way to compare subwoofers in the same in-room environment so you can get a feel of how the subs uh, perform uh, in, in a real environment. And the comparison is exactly apples to apples, right? So everything's exactly the same. So it's a really, really cool way to, to look at the subs as long as I can get my hands on them. And I've, I'm gonna show you that uh, comparison for these two subwoofers in just a minute. But uh, before we get to the juicy part, just a few things that you'll want to consider uh, when you compare the two subs. So um, if you look at the fit and finish, uh, the Perlison is a little bit nicer. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's heavier. Uh, there's a uh, gloss version that's really, really nice. Uh, also on the top of the Perlison is an LC display that allows you to access the advanced functions of the subwoofer uh, that the Stark Sound does not have. The, the Stark Sound is what I would consider to be uh, more utilitarian, meaning it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It does what a subwoofer is supposed to do. It plays bass, right? Uh, but it doesn't have the app and other features that the Perlison does. Uh, so if you look at the subs from that perspective, you know, the, the Perlison does have its app. Uh, you can do everything that you need to the sub uh, from your cell phone or from your tablet. Um, it's really cool. And like I said, it's got the display on top that's touchscreen that you can uh, interact with as well. Uh, the Stark Sound is more traditional on the back. You've got a volume and you've got phase and you've got crossover, those kinds of things. It does have XLR in and RCA in, uh, which competes with the, uh, uh, the Perlison that has those inputs as well. Um, so you're, you're on good footing there, but it, it's really the, you know, that kind of distinction between basic set of, of features and a much more exotic set of features. And if, if you find value there, that's something you'll want to consider. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and jump into the really juicy part, which is how do they compare when you measure them? And, uh, I found this pretty surprising and I think you will too. Okay, what you're looking at now is REW, which is a, a frequency measurement tool that a lot of people use to measure subwoofers. And I've got the measurements for the SW15 and the D15S loaded. Uh, one thing I wanna talk about first though is on the Perlison side of the house, the subwoofer does have different EQ curves built in that you can use. And I wanna show you those now. Um, so this is uh, the THX EQ. And then for those that, uh, that haven't watched my content before. This uh, this dip, this dip, and this dip. So the you know seventy eight. What is this? 70, 76 and sixty three and thirty seven. This is all room induced stuff with the with the sub placement. So this curve would be flat otherwise. It makes a, a really nice curve through there. Um, so this is the uh, the THX EQ curve. Um, this is the large room curve. And then this is the small room curve. Uh, I did all of my measuring using the THX curve, uh, which is 
this guy. Uh, and so this is the one that I'm going to compare uh, to the Stark Sound. All right. Uh, so I'm going to pull up the Stark Sound measurements. If you want more in depth in the Stark Sound, uh, please watch that review video. Uh, but uh, what I find is uh, most subwoofers have a limiter and uh, it, you know, they're implemented in different ways like uh, SVS and, and Miller Kreisel. They limit across the entire frequency band. So basically on those subwoofers, when you get to the top end of output, uh, it doesn't matter how much additional input voltage you put in. They just don't get any louder, right? They're like, this is what we do, and we're not going to go any louder than that. Uh, the Stark sound looks like they pin theirs right around 20 hertz. Uh, you know, it, it the volume will continue to scale at the top end, but they're like, okay, we're not going to let things blow up uh, when it gets down here to the low end. And this is uh, the same kind of philosophy that uh, that I see in Velodyne. And I, I've got a deep blue, deep blue review coming out pretty soon, and you'll be able to compare that, and you'll see that the way that they uh, limit their sub output is almost identical to the way that, uh, that Stark Sound limits there. So um, now this sub will play louder. Um, however, it won't play louder uh, really from 25, 27 hertz down um you know I, I actually did a little bit of measurements really super down low under this 15 hertz and it opens back up a bit um but i figured they were limiting the sub for a reason so i didn't want to push too hard and and cause any issues but uh you know it was, it was nice and solid up to this level and you know it's got output you know solid at the you know like 100 decibels in my room where it was pushing, positioned at it'll be different for everyone um but i'll go ahead and just uh let me let me take off I'll just leave both of those up. Okay, so now let's take a look at the per listen curve. And uh, this is pretty much the max output of uh, of the sub. At least this is the max that I tested in my environment. I had a little more in the tank. Um, but if you look, these curves are, are, are super similar um, between the, the Stark and the, and the per listen. And, you know, what I take that to mean is that both of these subwoofers within their capabilities are playing back the you know what's fed to them about as perfectly as as you can expect it to be done um you know this is this on the on the stark sound sub is like no pinning at all no 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 limitations and uh you know it's playing i think all the way all the way right down to about 15 hertz where things diverge a little bit from the from the sub that costs 10 times as much really 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 well now there's a there's a difference in output volume uh, i mean the perlism is is ungodly loud <laughs> it sounds ungodly good uh and it, it's really the kind of the pinnacle of the sealed 15 inch subwoofer and, and it's uh the you know the measuring stick for everything else um but they really put out more bass if there's such a thing. I know people out there are going to be like, more, too much bass, what now? Um, they, uh, they put out more bass than you really actually need, I think. Um, uh, you know, two, two of the per listens is just just kind of just a lot a lot of bass and, you know, it's flat all the way down to low 10 hertz. Um, but I was super shocked to see how well um, a $500 sub could keep up with a five thousand dollar monster. Um, now, if you if you were to invest a thousand dollars with Stark and get a second one, you know this would bump your output another three decibels or so. So, you know your your curve would be flowing somewhere in here. So at I guess that would be a thousand out of five thousand. So at twenty percent of the cost, uh, rather than an order of magnitude lower, you know you're losing maybe three decibels. And if you bought four of them, you know, you're, you, you would be kind of at the same level of this, but uh, you would be a, a much smoother uh, presentation across your room for, for the base as opposed to a, to a single sub. Um, so I guess really uh, this conversation for folks is going to be driven by your pocketbook. Now, if you've got uh, 10 grand to drop on subs, uh, you know, and, and you don't want to go some huge 21 or 24 inch route, you know, which is, is 
for some people that's the way to go, right? But if, if you're looking for a really high end experience and you need that sealed 15 form factor, uh, there's really nothing better than the Perlison on the market. Uh, and, and, you know, you would get this and if you got two of them, you know, you'd be peaking, you know, you'd be like a hundred, like 105 decibels all the way down to 10 Hertz or something, at least in my, in my room. Um, and, and so that, that's, that's exceptionally good, but it's 10 grand. Um, you could spend a thousand dollars on the Stark sound subs and have really the same, uh, kind of quality of output, but there's just not as much of it. Um, and you don't get the features of EQ, uh, app, uh, accessibility, and, uh, some of the aesthetics that, that are available with the, the per listen. Um, so, you know, which, which one of these is better? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you look at things, absolutely the, uh, the, the per listen is it, from an absolute sense better, right? It has more output. It has more features and that kind of stuff, uh, but it costs a lot. Uh, you know, that subjective, which is better, it's really, it really becomes hard uh, because it's really a pocketbook kind of, uh, of choice. Um, and, you know, I've run both of these in my, in my environment and I enjoyed both of them uh, very, very much. So for folks that have uh, more of a budget constraint, and I think that's probably 95% of the market, uh, you, it's really hard to do better than the, the Stark Sound SW15 when it's on sale. Um, and for those that have uh, have deeper pockets that are looking for a small form factor subwoofer um, that is kind of no no holds barred, the, the Perlison D15S is the one to go with. Uh, just superb. I, I can't wait to get my hands on uh, one of the Perlisons that has dual drivers. <laughs> Holy smokes, that's going to be ridiculous. Um, I'm super excited about that. So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful as you think about what kind of subs you need in your environment. If so, please like and subscribe, hit the button, all that stuff. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.